Good day, viewers. Welcome back to The Preaching Humanist with David Oliverio. That is I. Uh, Today we will continue with episode number 14, uh, part number two. Last week we discussed Christian mythology, uh, the hatred of reason and enlightenment. And let's go ahead and continue, shall we, with the same topic. I did not bring my King James Bible today, so no Holy Ghost preaching today. Have a little fun. So we're just going to chill out today for about 15 minutes and let's talk about uh, the difference of this knowledge of the Bible or what you Christians would call godly wisdom versus the intellect, the intelligence of human beings. Uh, And let's discuss that. So we use a little world history today. I think most of you have taken history before, uh, whether it was back in grade school, high school, college and so forth. And I'm assuming that most of you understand most of these basic principles um, of world history and what has happened um, in the history of our species and how we've changed from um, a uncivilized species. And we're continually progressing uh, on and on to become more civilized and intelligent. Um, So let's discuss that. So last week we did discuss, we used several scriptures in the book of uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 4. Um, on how the Bible was um, basically against uh, the wisdom of man, how God has chosen the weak things of this world to confound the wise and the uh, unintelligible things to confound those that are wise. So we will discuss this today. Let's start with the New Testament church in the book of Acts. Uh, For a couple hundred years after the death of Christ, we understand based on the Bible that the apostles and the disciples went out and began to spread the message of Christianity through the missionary work of the apostle Paul, uh, which was Christianity was once a very uh, one-sided religion only geared toward the Jews. Jesus said he came not for the Gentile, not for anybody else, but for the Jew. Um, Paul the Apostle took Christianity and brought it uh, to the entire world, to the Jews and everyone, and, and to the Greeks and the entire civilized world at that time. We know that the Roman Empire uh, was uh, the empire of the world at that time, the major power. And we know that uh, Nero and all the way up to Constantine had rule over the Jewish and the Christian people. Uh, through Constantine's uh, conversion to Christianity in the 300s uh, after the alleged death of Christ, and through history, uh, was converted to Christianity. So Christianity now was the Roman Empire's religion. No longer did they worship uh, Mars and Venus and the other Roman gods. Now it was primarily a Christian uh, empire, the Roman Empire. Now, funny thing happened here. An interesting thing happened to the progressivism and the evolution, the social evolution or the social intellect of human beings. We begin to enter into the Dark Ages not after long after that. We begin to see uh, through even through Muhammad and the start of Islam in the 600s, of course, uh, Muhammad, much like uh, Moses and much like Jesus, had his word from his deity, right? A secluded prophet hearing the message of Allah, just like Moses, just like Jesus, uh, always an isolated prophet, and begin to influence other people with their message, alleged message from their deity. Now, after Islam, then we begin to slowly gravitate into what we call the Middle Ages or the Dark Ages. This is when intellectualism, human wisdom of man, uh, was beginning to be degraded, was beginning to be uh, put down. Uh, and instead of the soul, or instead of the human mind, uh, place number one, we begin to see how the Middle Ages led us into what we call the Dark Ages. This was an anti-reason age. For hundreds of years, we were ruled by religion. Uh, we know that in the around the year 1097, Pope Urban had his epiphany, his sudden realization and understanding. The Lord spoke to him, right? And his message was was to go out and to reestablish Christianity as a world domination. And, of course, we understand what happened there. There was not much reason. There was not much 
intellect and enlightenment going on during the Dark Ages. We know that the message was to go out and to conquer and to fight the uh, Islamic countries and was to convert the world to Christianity. Interesting to know that the two most uh, widespread religions on earth today, 33% of the world population believes in the Christian God. Number one, Christianity. A close second, number two, Islam, with 24% of the world population believing in the religion or the God of Islam, uh, which is close to 60% if I'm doing my math right. So over half of the world population believes in Christianity or Islam. The, these two religions, does it mean that they're correct? Does it mean that they've got the truth? I'll tell you why they're so big. Because they marched across the continents, subjugating, destroying, and conquering across the oceans and worldwide to spread the message of their religion. So let's take a little journey, shall we, uh, in world human history here. Middle Ages, we didn't have much reason. We didn't have science yet. We had a lot of torture. We had a lot of enslavement. We had burning witches at the stake. We had people literally taken the atrocities of the Old Testament in the Bible. Much like Pope Urban got his idea of conquering, of going across and fighting and killing in the name of God, in the name of Christianity. And where did he get this idea? Did he get it from using reason and human intelligence? Or did he get it from a book called the Bible or the Old Testament? All he had to do was read the book of Deuteronomy, the book of Joshua and Judges in the New T- Old Testament of the Bible. His ideas came much like many ideas come from many Christians today, from the book, from the Bible. So where did he get his idea of conquering and destroying and killing? Was it from intellect? Was it from rationality or reason? Or was it from a primitive religion of destruction and conquering and subjugation? I think you know the answer to that. He saw it in the Bible. He was just being a real Christian. He was being a real believer in God. God said it. He did it. Went out and followed. Not until about the 14 or 1500s do we begin to see an evolution, a psychological or social evolution in our species of Homo sapiens begin to finally gravitate away from the atrocities of the Middle and Dark Ages. I don't have time to go over all the torture, uh, what went on during the Middle Ages. The witch burnings. Hell, if I were living back then, you guys would be torturing me right now. There was a sudden shift from the valuing of a soul to the valuing of human lives. And we are continually gravitating toward that. So, my point and my question to you, my dear Christian friends, what brought human beings, our species of Homo sapiens, out of those destructive, evil, dark Middle Ages? Was it the loving Christian deity? Was it the deity of Islam? Was it the deity of Judaism? Or was it human enlightenment, human understanding, and human wisdom and knowledge? The answer is clear. The age of reason, the enlightenment of humanism, the age of renaissance is what brought us out of those atrocious dark ages. Those years, hundreds of years of human slaughter and subjugation. Could you imagine being and living in China And looking up and seeing hordes and hordes of Mongolian subjugators coming to you with swords drawn, killing the men, keeping the women and the children as slaves. This is what happened in the Dark Ages. Could you imagine being a Muslim and living in a Muslim city and seeing many Christian soldiers coming into your city with with shields with a large Christian cross and symbol upon the shield, and slaughtering and killing. This came from a primitive, barbaric religion. It came not from reason or intellect, but rather it came from a mythology, a primitive mythology. The bright, the enlightenment of reason, 
the age of reason, the renaissance, the enlightenment of humanism began in the 14 and 1500s. I'm going to read to you a list of enlightened thinkers that I'm very grateful to. I'm not grateful to a God for bringing us into modern civility. But I think we need to look back and thank human beings. And this is my point. So many Christians and so many religious people find it very difficult and challenging to recognize and give credit to where credit is due. Credit is due to human intelligence, to human enlightenment, not upon religion. Human enlightenment is what brought us out of dark ages into modern civility, not religion. And before I get into the name of thinkers, I just had a little epiphany, a sudden realization and understanding. A good example I like to use when I talk to magical believers and Christians trying to help you to understand these things is I'll bring up intelligent human beings. Let's say climatologists. Let's talk about weather. Uh, I'm kind of a weather buff, one of my weird little interests. I do like science. I do like philosophy. If I talk to people about the weather, I tell them, And I show data and facts. I'll even use my iPhone here. And I'll look up a certain zip code. And I'll say, while talking to someone about the weather. And that's a good subject that everybody likes to talk about. It's a good icebreaker to talk with people about. It seems to me, through the years, when I bring up weather. And I show people scientific data. D-A-T-A. Overwhelming evidence from intelligent human beings who have devoted their lives to research and education in a particular field of expertise. That they, some human beings, look down almost with disdain upon them rather than appreciation upon human beings that are very brilliant and smart and many of them that do not have any mythological concepts or religious beliefs. People that have devoted their life for years and years to help us understand how the natural world works. So when I'm talking to people and I'll say, well, the weather forecast here, let's see what the five day forecast is from scientists of weather. And I like to use this as a perfect example. And I tell them the forecast invariably, at least 60 to 70 percent of people I talk to. Most of them, very religious or Christians, usually make a comment such as, oh, they don't know. They're wrong. They don't know. They're the only profession. That's the only profession out there that doesn't lose their job when they're wrong. (laughs) As if meteorologists and climatologists are just guessing. The fact is, if you want to search data, and I do this, I look at the weather every day. And about 90 to 95% of the time, these brilliant human beings with modern technology and science are very accurate. They're correct within one or two degrees. The forecast for this part of the country was forecasted correctly this year of 2015. June, July, and August, they said, would be below normal average temperature and above average rainfall. We're right on track, exactly what they said. About every eight to nine years, this happens. Now, where did this wisdom intelligence come from? Of course, human intelligence. Uh, Not from a god. Humans have done this. Uh, Let me give you a list of thinkers that I appreciate and I'm thankful for who stood out against the Dark Age mythologies of Christianity, Islam, and Judaism and brought us into the Age of Reason and the Enlightenment And we are still moving and advancing ahead. People like Copernicus. What about Galileo? How about Thomas Hobbes? David Hume? And those of you that have studied world history and philosophy, these names will ring a bell. Rousseau. Thomas Paine, one of my heroes. Thomas Jefferson, another one. Francis Bacon. Voltaire. Got to be my favorite there. Voltaire. How about Friedrich Nietzsche, if I'm saying that right? John Locke. There are many men and women who stepped out and began to help us understand the natural world. 
to understand that we as a species are moving into modern civility. We are moving away from violence. We have moved away from less diabolical behavior, away from primitive thinking. And here at the, in the year of 2015, we have progressed immensely from just 10, 20, 30 years ago. Violence is on the decline. Murder rates are on the decline. All we see now are isolated incidents of violence around the world. Nothing like we used to see. And I'm encouraging you people, you Christians out there, to begin to understand that if you look back in world history, we did not come out of those brutal barbaric years of the dark and middle ages by obeying Jesus. Jesus did not bring us out of the dark ages. Christianity and religion brought us into those primitive, horrific years. And I'm thankful for brightened, thinking human beings using their mind and their using reason above faith who brought us out of the, those dark ages. We are receiving the benefits from these men and women I call of heroes in our life. This is what I call reason and rationality. The wisdom, intelligence of men. It's time we stand and those of us that believe in rationality and reason, we begin to stand up against those that disdain and look down upon the wisdom of man. It's not bad to use your mind. It's not cruel to me use your mind. It's beneficial for you. It's beneficial for me. It's beneficial for the entire planet if we slowly let go of these primitive mythologies and begin to gravitate and continually evolve with social evolution, psychological evolution, and more knowledge, and more education, and less religion. We are progressing, and I will do everything in my power, in my little tiny YouTube channel here, to do all I can to get people to begin to think and to reason, and give credit to where credit is due, to human beings who figure out science, to figure out philosophy, who figure out other ways to help other human beings with no supernatural beliefs. All right, I'm finished. Thank you for watching The Preaching Humanist with David Oliverio. Next week we'll begin a new episode, and I'll bring my King James Bible, and we'll get back to some good old preaching. Have a wonderful day. And remember, no God is required for a life of love, joy, peace, fulfillment, meaning, and purpose in life. The good life is one guided by reason and motivated by love. Have a great day. See you next week.